Hello there guys, it is the Carnegie Medal announcement day. I know all of you have been following the Carnegie Medal closely. Some of you read some, some of you read all eight titles within the collection. We're gonna have a little bit of a quiz today, punctuated by a few reviews that have been submitted. It's a real shame that we're not all face to face. Normally we will be having an event in one of the schools at which you'd all be attending um, and hopefully even with some visiting authors and activities. I'm not sure obviously what will be going on in your particular school, but I hope you've had the opportunity to have a go at the quiz. The Carnegie Medal really is a fantastic award and we really appreciate all of the work that you guys have put in. First book is Look Both Ways by Jason Reynolds. Couple of reviews here. I'm gonna read you one from Zainab at Lara Trait. Look Both Ways is a collection of short stories that link together. It's made up of 10 parts about reality through the eyes of school children walking home and their many detours along the way. In the book, the theme is reality, problems with reality, ways other escape reality and the things to appreciate about reality. In each of the stories, a new struggle that people face is brought up and the way the book is written makes it really enjoyable to read about. While it is about serious things, it is hilarious. The author has a great sense of humour and it takes away some of the seriousness of reality. The characters created are amazing. They all vary and it makes it fun to read from their point of view. Personally, I found the book hard to read at the start as many things were unclear. However, as you read more, things start to make more sense and the ending nicely summarises everything together. Furthermore, it does make you appreciate small things like walking home. I would recommend this book to people who enjoy reading books about real life. It's quite a short book, about 200 pages, so it will be a good book to recommend to people who don't read often. That being said, it does need a very specific preference to be able to enjoy the book to its full potential. Overall, I would give it 3.7 out of 5 stars. It was a good book, but the beginning is very fuzzy and the book can be hard to read at times. However, the humour and the storyline make up for all that. Well, Zainab, thank you very much. So are we ready for the quiz? Round one, Jason Reynolds, look both ways. Boom. Question one. What condition does Jasmine Jordan have? A for hay fever, B for sickle cell anemia, C for asthma. Question two. Who is the leader of the low cuts? A for John John, B for Trista, C for Bit. Question three. What did Pia Foster name her skateboard? A is Skitter, B is Scatter, C is Skinner. Question 4. Dusty is made from A, a vacuum bag, B, a broom, or C, a dustpan. And your final question for Jason Reynolds' book. Andrew Dahl holds the world record for A blowing up balloons with his nose, B owning the most rubber ducks, or C eating the most sunflower seeds. Hmm, Trixie. Book 2, The Girl Who Became a Tree by Joseph Coelho. So here's a review for you, The Girl Who Became a Tree by Inaya and Dunraven. The Girl Who Became a Tree is a good book in how it speaks of dealing with grief, but overall, I don't think that the story truly appealed to me. It took a reread to fully comprehend the events of the story, and even then it was slow. For me, it kept switching the viewpoint of the storyteller a bit too often than I would have liked. For example, it would change the viewpoint from the girl Daphne to the monster in the woods. The Girl Who Became a Tree is a book that superbly illustrates what it's like to lose a loved one once you succeed in understanding it, yet, I think that the way the book is written could be improved to give it a five star rating. Well, thank you for that, Anaya. So let's have a look at our questions for the girl who became a tree. Question one. When Daphne enters the library after school, how many deep breaths does she take of the library's woody scent? Mmm. A is two, B is three, C is four. I do love a fresh woody smell. Question two. What colour is Daphne's phone? A for silver, B for white, or C for rose gold? Very popular choice a couple of years ago that one was. Question three. What knots are not in the library? 
A. Pecans B. Brazils or C. Almonds Question 4. How old is Daphne? A is 12, B is 13 and C is 14. And finally, question 5. What does Daphne's dad sometimes call her? A. Sapling B. Twig or C. Branch hmm. Third book for today then, Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Achevedo. Let's have a look. We have a review here from Tio at Elm Green. Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Achevedo is an inspirational, moving and exceptional story of two sisters who live completely different lives but are brought together by their father's tragic death. The book covers many subjects such as grief, secrets and forgiveness in a beautiful manner. I loved how it was unpredictable and always left me wondering what was going to happen next. Let's have some questions then. Clap when you land. Question one. Question one. What is Yahara's girlfriend Dre's real name? A. Deirdre. B. Andrea. C. Diana. Question two. Which airport was Pappy flying from when the plane crashed? A for Heathrow. B for JFK International. C for La Guardia. Question three. What is the name of Camino's dog? A. Viralata. B. Vitalate. C. Viraloto. Question four. Where did Camino's friend Caroline work before she had her baby? A. She worked in the supermarket. B. She worked at the resort. C. She worked at the garage. Question 5. What university does Camino dream of attending? A for Columbia, B for Harvard, and C for Cornell University. What university do you intend to go to, guys? It may seem a few years off yet, but it's worth thinking about. Our next book is On Midnight Beach by Marie Louise Fitzpatrick. I've got a review by Theo here, such an amazing book but with such a sad ending. I couldn't put this book down for a second, I just had to know what was coming next. I had so much fun reading this book and I also learned a lot about the summer of 1976 and the ancient Irish legend of unpronounceable words in the process. So here we go on to the quiz then on Midnight Beach. Seth Cullen killed Rashes the dog with A. A hurley stick B. A cricket bat C. A baseball bat Question 2. Dolphin is given the name Rin. What is Rin the Irish word for? A. C. B. Flipper. C. Point. Question 3. What is the name of the town across the bay from Carrie Cove? Is it A. Ballyfin, B. Ramelton, or C. Ross? Question 4. When Rin is lured into the harbour, how does he escape? A. He jumps over the pontoons. B. He swims under the nets. Or C. He crashes through the boats. Question 5. In what year does this story take place? Is it A. 2017? Is it B. 1976? Or is it C. 1812? It's about halfway through now, guys. Here, next book is Run Rebel Run by Manjeet Man. Review from Seaham here at Elm Green. I enjoyed this book and I liked that it was written in verse and how it was written in the first person. It wasn't detailed so much to the point of getting boring. I liked how she's talking about stuff that happens and how Amber and her mother addressed the situation they were in. It was really enjoyable. Well, thank you for that, Seaham. Let's have a look at some questions then on Run Rebel Run by Manjeet Man. Question one, where does mum first work on her arrival to England? A, a denim factory. B. A supermarket or C. A school? Question 2. Why does Amber believe that she can convince her dad that she was with Mrs Whittle after school? A. Mrs Whittle trains the athletics team. B. He will remember her from parents' evening because of her purple hair. Or C. Mrs Whittle is Amber's tutor. Question 3. Who gets Amber her new trainers? A would be Dad, B would be Miss Sutton, and C would be Ruby. Question 4. What happened in last year's county championships? 
A. Amber came first. B. Amber missed out on a medal. C. Amber was not allowed to attend. And finally, question five. What does Amber discover about the man, Mr. Garcher? A. He did not kill his daughter. B. He's helping his mum learn to read. Or C. He is dad's brother. The next book we've got to cover here is Founds of Salad by Ruta Sapetis. Another review from Tio. This book was absolutely amazing, from the storyline to the characters. I loved how there was an element of surprise with plot twists in every corner. I've certainly learnt a few things about how life for Spaniards was during the Civil War too. This piece of historical fiction was just breathtaking. Great review there. Spanish Civil War really is a deep, deep topic with lots of twists and turns and lots of involved parties. So I'm glad you found it interesting and maybe you should look into it a little bit more in the future. But let's get on with the quiz. Boom! Question one. What is the occupation of Daniel's father? A. Oil tycoon. B. For diplomat. C. Journalist. Two. Anna's sister is making a suit for which of the following? General Franco would be A. A bridegroom would be B. A matador would be C. Question three for you history buffs out there. When was the Spanish Civil War fought? A. 1936 to 1939. B. 1939 to 1945. C. 1947 to 1991. Hmm, interesting. Question four. Who was the leader of the nationalist forces? A. General Francisco Franco. B. Heinrich Himmler. C. Benito Mussolini. Question five. Which of Ruta Sapetti's novels made the Carnegie Medal shortlist in 2017? A. Out of the Easy. B. Between Shades of Grey. C. Salt to the Sea. Oh, we're all still having fun working our way through these. Don't worry, there will be answers at the end of the quiz, so you need to be trying to do these in real time. Our next book we're going to talk about is Echo Mountain by Lauren Volk. Got ourselves a review by Atta from Dunraven here. I think that this book was written really well, as it uses words that match well with the journey inside the book. It also makes you want to read on a lot. However, I think the story could be improved with more dramatic moments or moments that separate it from the area the book is in so that it can be even more interesting. A couple of reviews there from Dom Raven. It looks like the book has gone down well there. Let's have some questions. Boom! Question one. What caused the accident to Ellie's father? A would be a car crash. B he was hit by a falling tree. Or C he fell off a ladder. Question two. What musical instrument did Ellie's mother use to play? A for violin, B for cello, or C for mandolin? Question three. Who did Ellie save first on Mount Echo? A for bear, B for dog, and C for cat. Question four. What is the name of Carte's dog? A for captain, B for quiet, and C for boy. And finally, question five. What did Ellie find in her pocket soon after her family first arrives on Echo Mountain? A, a snowdrop, B, a violet, or C, a primrose? Mm. Next one, The Girl Who Speaks Bear by Sophie Anderson. Another review from Atta Dunraven here. I think this book is written in a very unique way so the reader gets impressed from the writing. However, I think that the story could be even better if the author had kept it a little bit simple and a little bit more clear. Ooh, interesting stuff. Let's get on with the quiz then. The Girl Who Speaks Bear. Question one, what animal is Yuri? A, a wolf, B, an elk, or C, a deer? 
Question two, who is Mousetrap? A, a cat, B, a weasel, or C, a badger? Question three, what is Yanka's best friend's name? A, Sasha, B, Shasa, C, Karen. Question four, and Atalie's dog's names are A, Bayan, Yuri, Tsar, Robin, B, Ray, Boris, Carrie, Brown, C, Nessa, Brian, Piotr and Zoya. Mm -hmm. And question five, how old was Yanka when she was found by Mamotchka? A for five, B for three and C for two. Well guys, that was all the books. Hope you enjoyed the reviews, hope you enjoyed the quiz. We're gonna put some slides up in a moment with the answers on. So if you missed some of the questions, probably need to rewind the video now. Thanks for taking part. Hope you enjoy the announcements today and fingers crossed that the book you wanna win is gonna be today's winner. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>